Good morning. How's everybody doing? So glad to be here today. You know, um, I want you to just know that God is definitely, and this is important for you to know, and you've heard this, He's for you. And there's a scripture that says, don't fear, for I am with you. I, 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 think, I think the biggest struggle, I talked to the women's minister about this, the biggest ha bad habit that we got to break, the worst bad habit in the world is our negative self-talk. How we talk ourselves into depression, we talk ourselves into rejection, we talk ourselves into worst case scenarios. Do you know a lot of us are really suffering with a lot of worry and fears? Because when you look at your future, you see dread, you see problems, you don't see victory, you don't see restoration, you don't see yourself in a better place, and you tell yourself over and over these things. And how do you think that you're actually going to get to a better place when you're talking so negative over yourself? I, I think this, that the biggest enemy we have is not liter it's not even the devil. It's what we, uh, we say to ourselves. You might have messed up, but you're not a failure. Come on, you might, you might be going through, come on, you might have been defeated in a situation, but it, it doesn't mean that you can't overcome that. You know, so it's really important. To, we know the story of the lady in the Bible that she had 12 years of, of a struggle. She was sick for 12 years. And, and if you've been facing something for a long period of time, it's difficult to keep your faith. It's difficult to keep your hope alive. Uh, but she did somehow. The Bible says that she was sick for 12 years. She went to every doctor, every quack doctor. She spent all her money. And after she was done, she didn't get any better. The scripture says she got worse. Now, most people, when it gets worse, they're convinced it's always going to get worse. It's never going to get better, especially after 12 years. But Jesus walked through her town. And the scripture says, he gave us a, the privilege of hearing what she was thinking. The scripture said, she said to herself, say it with me, she said to herself. She said to herself, she got a vision of still being healed, even though everything was pointing or the evidence was against it. She said to herself, if I could just touch, I don't know where she got this idea from, this vision from, but she said, if I could just touch the bottom of Jesus' robe, I'll be healed. And, and what she did, she just didn't think that. She put action on it. There's somebody here that you need to change your story that you're telling yourself. And you got to be saying, if I could just get to church today, I could get restored. I could get set free. I could get the provision I need. I could get the breakthrough. I could get the healing. This is my turn around moment. And until you start telling yourself this moment, everything's going to change. Nothing's going to change. And then she starts saying that. The scripture says that she had a vision and she took action. See, faith without action produces no results. Understand, hearing what we're talking about without receiving and taking action won't change your life. Don't, you see, don't think that you're going to be here, hear a lot of good information, got a lot of good instruction, and not take action, and anything's going to change. I want you to understand this. God gives you instructions to take action. And if you could take action, I guarantee you this, your life will change. If you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to keep on getting what you're getting. But if you just make up your mind, today I'm going to change my thinking. I'm going to change my actions. I'm going to hear the word. I'm going to apply it. My life is going to change. It started now. She did. And the Bible says she drove, she dove. I, I mean, I could just see her in slow motion like boom. She grabs the hem of his garment. As soon as she touched the bottom of Jesus' robe, Jesus says, who touched me? Who, who pulled a miracle out of me? Who pulled the healing out of me? Who pulled a victory out of me? Who pulled joy out of me? Who pulled peace out of me? Who pulled, who pulled a, a marriage restored? Who pulled that thing out? Who pulled freedom out of me? Who did that? And then the disciple says, 
there's a crowd around you, man. There's a lot of people touching you. He goes, nah, somebody touched me with some faith. Somebody came in here with an expectation. Come on, is there anybody here that knows this? That same Jesus that walked through her town. It's that same Jesus that's here, available to you. And all you got to do is use the little faith that you got and start speaking. I'm going to get my breakthrough today. I'm going to get my turnaround today. I'm going to get my freedom today. I'm going to get my restoration today. Today is my day. How many believe that? Come on. Jesus, she finally said, it was me. I touch you. And Jesus says, honey, or baby, I don't know if he said that. He said, your faith has made you whole and complete. You know all God's saying? I'm going to tell you this. Doubt will stop you from receiving everything good in your life. But if you just have a little faith, Come on, and start speaking life over yourself. You know who's going to get something out of this service today? The ones that are speaking. I'm not going to leave here the same way I came in. Something's going to change in my life, and it's starting right now. I'm getting my breakthrough. Can anybody give a little bit of praise to the Lord if you're saying, that's me? That's me. That's me. This is Memorial Day weekend, and I'm right now. This is a this is a time that I'm going to remember. I remember that weekend. That weekend was the weekend my marriage was saved. That was the weekend my body was healed. That was the weekend I made up my mind who I'm going to serve. That could be your reality. Let it be your story. I'm going to let you know God loves you. We love you, and. Today's your moment. I, I'm going to say one, one more thing that I, I went on. I went on vacation. And me and Lisa went on a cruise, and I like to talk to people, and and I talk. I like to talk to the people that work there because they're from all over the world. And there was a young man that was in charge of the. They sell watches in the store, and and I and I and I told him. I, I go. How how does this work? He goes. I sign up to work six months, a six months contract, and they sign up for six months with not one day off in six months. And I go, do you get commission for your sales? He goes, yes, if I sell $15,000 worth of watches, I get 1% commission, which is 115 bucks. He goes, and I, I, I didn't hit my number, so I, I'm not gonna get a bonus unless a miracle happens, right? He goes, it's not gonna happen. I go, so what's your vision? And, and I talked to two or three people. And you know what every one of their visions were? I'm going to work on the ship. I'm going to save money. And I'm going to get citizenship to the United States of America. I, I want you to get this, that there's millions of people that are trying to cross the border with a vision. If I could just cr cross the border and get to the land of opportunity, my life would change. And that's all perspective. And if they get across the border, this is the reality. They'll outwork us, maybe. They'll outdream us. And maybe they'll outperform us. Just because their perspective, if I could just get there. And many of us are here. And there's opportunity all around us. But there's a devil that's been tricking you. And all he's is showing you how that you're a victim. <laughs> that he can't turn around. That there's no way you can do it. And I'm telling you, that's a lie the devil's telling you. Because God did not bring you to this church. He did not bring you into this life, into this generation without a plan of greatness over your life. The Bible says that my plans are for good and not evil. Hope and a future. Come on, you got to start giving God some praise. Change your perspective and say it's changing now. Awesome. I'm not, I haven't started preaching yet. That's just a, hello, what's up? Are you guys excited? Come on, are you ready to receive something from God? Okay. We're, today we're going to be talking about your purpose. And, and sometimes when we talk about purpose, it almost can seem boring because your purpose takes work. But in your purpose is every single thing that you want in life. And until you're fulfilling your purpose, there's going to be an emptiness in your life that no drug, that no girl, 
no amount of fame that you accomplish, no, no degree, nothing is going to be able to fill that void and you're going to live an unsatisfied life. You're going to be like the Rolling Stones singing, we can, I can't get no satisfaction. Is that going to be your life, an unsatisfied life with no purpose and then you die? That's not going to be you. That's why God brought you here. Okay, and, and your purpose is not to be, uh, come on, abused or your whole life. Your purpose is not to lose your whole life. Your purpose is not to be lonely your whole life. God has a purpose for your life, and you've been created to do some great things. Come on, let's give God some praise if we receive that for you. It's going to start now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Have your way today. Holy Spirit, teach us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. All right. Today we're going to be talking about serving. Someone say serving. And we've been talking about serving all month long. And, and this is the question, why is serving so important? Why, why do we talk about serving? I'm going to give you four reasons why serving is so important. The word serve means to help. It means to give assistance. It means to be useful. It means to contribute. All of us are called to help others and Give assistance to the weak and the hurting and the poor. To be useful, to contribute. It means to attend the needs of others. Another word for serving is ministry. You might be asking me this question, how many pastors do we have at the Way World Outreach? And I'll tell you this, it's not many. How many ministers do we have at the Way World Outreach? And I'm going to say this, thousands. Because every single one of you is a minister. The word servant means a minister. You and I are called to serve the hurting, the broken, the lost. It also means to use our gifts and talents to fulfill God's will on earth. That means God wants to fulfill his will on earth. Jesus is still healing people. Jesus is still teaching. Jesus is still discipling and mentoring. Jesus is still setting people free. Jesus is still casting out demons. Jesus is still doing miracles. He's doing it now through you and me, the ministers. And you know why people, a lot of people have been, have, have, have uh, uh, there's a lot of back, there's a lot of people been backsliding. And I'll tell you why we're backsliding. We've lost our fire. There's fire in your purpose. When you start fulfilling your assignment on earth and you start serving God by serving people, you're going to start seeing God's power in your life. I remember that a lady in our church asked me to pray for her. But she asked me to pray for her after I had a 12-hour shift at my job. And the night before, I worked probably 16 hours. And she called me. She goes, I'm really sick. I've called the ambulance. I need some help. I can't breathe. I've been sick. But before the ambulance comes, can you please come and pray with me? Now, service is work. Now, just because I'm a pastor doesn't mean I was extra excited about going over a house and praying. Because service is not always excitement, it's work, it's labor, and you sacrifice because you love God and you love people. So I remember driving to her house, and she was on a breathing machine. She couldn't breathe. Her, uh, her blood sugar was all off. It looked like she was dying. She was in the hospital all year long, fragile, no energy. So I went to her house. And I'm going to do an act of service. I'm going to serve her by doing something really simple. I'm going to pray for her. And as I begin to pray for her, I'm really hearing God say something as I'm ready to pray for her. He says, don't pray for her yet. She needs to forgive some people. And until she forgives them, she won't be healed. So and then I stop. I go, I'm ready to pray for you, but who do you need to forgive? And I remember her saying with her breathing machine, she says... Everybody. So as I began to pray with her, and I want you, as I began to serve, see, Jesus wanted to heal her, and he's going to do it through a servant. 
it wasn't because I was specially anointed or specially feeling goosebumps all over me. I was tired, but I was willing. Serving is not just doing it when you feel like it. You serve because there's a need. And the greater love that you have for people, the greater sacrifices you're willing to make for them. We're living in a world of selfishness, self-centeredness, and selfish ambition. And that's why we're emptier than ever. We're, we don't even know what our identities are. We're destroying everything that we're touching because when we're selfish, we're destructive. So I, I, I asked her, and then we, I, she began to forgive this person, forgive this person, forgive this person. And as she started forgiving them, a demon manifested. And it started speaking through her. And then, and, and, and growling through her. And I, and, I, and I asked the demon, like Jesus would once in a while ask, who are you? What's your name? And it was crazy. It was a demon of sickness and infirmity. And it started saying, I'm emphysema. I'm high blood pressure. And he started naming every single condition she had. And this is what I did. I cast every one of them, just how I did. I command emphysema to go. I command asthma to go. I command high blood pressure to go. I command. So I started commanding every single disease that the doctors diagnosed her with that was keeping her in the hospital. And by the time she was done, she pulled out her breathing machine. She was instantly healed because someone was willing to say, God, if you could use anybody, just use me. Jesus is still doing the supernatural for those that are willing to serve. You guys got it? So you don't have to, you, I'm trying to, you don't have to fast for 40 days for God's power to show up. You have to start obeying God. Now, what reasons why we should serve. Number one, we were created to, to serve. Serving is our purpose on earth. After we get saved, serving God through serving others is the reason we're still here on earth. We are here to serve our families, our husbands, our wives, our churches, our communities, our employees, our employers, our customers. We should be the greatest servants in any industry. Everywhere we go, there should be a highlight next to our name. These people know how to serve. They serve with love, and they serve like they're actually serving a king. Because the truth is, while we're serving, we are serving a king. We serve as we're serving the Lord. And Jesus says, what you've done to the least of them, you've done unto me. Don't respect somebody that you think is lower than you. Put yourself in their position and honor them, because as you're honoring them, you're actually honoring the Lord and serving him. So let's look at the scripture. In Ephesians 2.10, it says, for we are his workmanship. He, his own master work, a work of art. Say it with me, I'm a work of art. Say it with me, I'm a work of art. I, I know you never heard that over yourself. You need to start speaking life over yourself. You're not an accident. You are amazing. God, you're God's work of art. There's nobody like you. Look at this. Created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above. Now, this is talking about some spiritual language. That means when you give your life to Jesus, you're reborn. That means you're made into a new person. You're spiritually transformed. You're renewed. For what? Ready to be used for good works, which God prepared for us before taking paths which he set. So that we would walk in them. In what? The good works. Living the good life which he has prearranged and made ready for us. I'm gonna, I want you to understand this. The good life is a service life. If you want to start living a satisfied, powerful life, the good life is serving others. Finding people's needs and meeting them. Doing what you can to help somebody that's down, lifting them up. I guarantee you this, you'll be happier, more satisfied than anything you've ever done. It's helping people. That's purpose. I remember when we started the church. When we started this church, I didn't know what I was doing. And I still barely know what I'm doing. But God knows what he's doing. But, but I'm not complicating anything. I'm, I, I'm, I didn't know how to start. I never was part of a church plant. But God called me to start a church. And when he's called me to start a church, I go, God, how do you start a church? And this is what God told me. He, go, he said, love the people by serving them, and you're going to serve them by finding their needs and meeting them. 
And so what I did, or well, how am I going to do that? He goes, just go on out there on a discovery mission, go to the hood, go knock on doors in the hood, and just ask them a simple question. And this was the question. We're thinking about starting a church in this area. But there's no need to start a church in this area if we don't even know what your needs are. What are you, what's your needs? And what do you think are the community's greatest needs? It was simple as that. And people started answering. They started answering, my greatest need is, I have no food. I ran out of money. This was very simple for me. I had money and I got food. It's at Stater Brothers. All I needed to do, I, I wasn't going to pray for food. I was going to go get food. And so what I would do is I would serve them by going to Stater Brothers and buying groceries for them. And I'd buy them what I like. I'm going to give them the best. Because if I sow the best, I get the best back. I'm going to love them the way, come on, I would want to be loved. So I'd go out there and buy them this wonderful groceries. They didn't even know I was coming back. I'd come back an hour later. i go, here's your groceries. they go, what? No one's ever done that for me. But as we were doing that, this is what would happen. They would begin to thank God as we're meeting needs. I remember just knocking on doors, meeting people that were lonely. Do you know, if you meet someone that's lonely, all you got to do is just visit them? I met senior citizens that had their family never visited them. They were all alone. It looked like they were just dying. And they had no company. It was very easy. All I needed to do, I was created for this. I was born again to serve. I wasn't born again to sit. I was born again for a purpose. I was born again to do a work. And anybody could sit down with Grandma Willoughby and just have some tea. I don't know if that was her name, but it sounds good to me. So every, every single Saturday or every Tuesday, it would be every week I'd go to their, her house. And Grandma Willoughby, how you doing? And she would just smile. And then we'd just have some tea. And we would talk. And then I would just talk to her. And I found out that she had no, really nobody there. So I brought some girls in to clean up her house and I got some guys to mow her lawn, and I got some other guys to paint her eaves. And, and every week for three months straight, I would go visit Grandma Willoughby, and she started smiling. People started asking, where's your church? I remember one day I went to the park, and there was a whole bunch of homeless people there. And I asked them the same line. If, uh, I said, we're thinking about starting a church in this area, but there's no need to start a church if we don't even know what your needs are. And they just told me we're hungry. So I went and got a whole bunch of number one burritos. And I, I counted how many homeless people were there. I got a whole bunch of number one a burrito fries and a, and a Coke. And I brought them out, gave them to every single one of them. And they started thanking me for, some of them thanked me. Some of them were so down and out they couldn't say thank you. But I was doing my part. I was allowing God to feed the 5,000 or maybe 50 homeless people that were there. Come on, Jesus is still feeding the 5,000. And the miracle, he didn't have to multiply. I had the money to go buy number ones. But you know what happened? They started asking us, where's your church? And what's amazing, 500 people from that neighborhood, including all the homeless people, they showed up to that service, and 400 of them gave their lives to Jesus because someone was willing to meet them where they're at and love them and serve them. I want you to get this. Don't underestimate your acts of service. God could do great things with it. Reason number two is serving keeps us on fire and growing. I would say this, use it or lose it. The only way to remain on fire and continue growing is to keep using the gift that God has given you. In 2 Timothy 1.6 it says, this is why I remind you, I'm reminding you, to keep using the gift God gave you. Keep using the talent that God gave you. Keep using the mind that God gave you for him when I laid hands on you. Let it grow as a small flame grows into a fire. If you want to be on fire, this is what I've learned. People that serve remain on fire. People that serve continue to grow. And where do you start serving? Anywhere. If you start serving just anywhere, you'll finally get to your destiny. You finally develop your gifts. 
The beginning, you might just say, I don't even know what I'm supposed to serve in. This is what you need to know. You're called to serve. You're created to serve. Whatever gift you have, use it for God. And what God is saying, you'll remain on fire. Before you backslide, you stop serving. This is, I've been serving God now for a lot of years, but I've never had a time in my life where I'm taken off from serving. I'll go on vacation, but I'm still a servant. But I'm not taken off. I, I, I'm never using a problem I'm going through to stop me serving. I remember when my daughter was in a hospital with cancer and she was, and she was struggling and it looked like she was dying. I still had a responsibility even there to serve her and I'd go in and serve her and I'd pray for her, but it was God that was going to heal her. But I was never going to use my baby as an excuse to not go out there and reach the hurting and broken. So I was doing both. Understand, you could have a problem. You could have a struggle. You could be, come on, going through the toughest time in your life. But don't you drop the mantle of your call and your, come on, to stop, don't stop serving because the serving is going to be your breakthrough. I remember when me and Lisa were going out as boyfriend and girlfriend, um, I, I, there was, I, I couldn't just hang out at her house because she was too tempting. Some of you guys are like stronger than I was. Like I just couldn't just hang out and just, let's kick back under a tree with a, you know, like let's have a picnic with a, with a blankie. That's the wrong position. Both of us laying down, it, 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 it just ain't going to work. You got no time? You know what I'm talking about? Because some of you guys got a blanket in the back of your car right now just in case. I like picnics. How about you, baby? You think you're a Casanova. I know what that blanket. Get that rid of that blanket in Jesus' name. So we tried dating like that, but it didn't work. It was going places that wasn't godly. And, and what would Jesus do? He wouldn't do that. So I told her, baby, I go, well, you know what we're going to do? Since we can't even make out because making out turns me on. Come on, that's just the way it is. Come on, stop acting like right, making out. They don't turn me out. Yeah, it does. That's what it's. I wanted to keep it godly, holy. It wasn't going there. So I go, this is what we're going to do. I'm not even going to kiss you and hug you no more because that ain't helping me. I want to live for Jesus. And she goes, you're right. It, this ain't right. I go, it ain't right. Right? So I go, what we're going to do, though, is we're going to have some dates. We'll have dates, but we're going to call them ministry dates. So what we did and the foundation of our, of our marriage, we would go to convalescent homes, visit senior citizens, visit the sick, or maybe hit the streets and do ministry. And I guarantee you this, while we were doing that, our spiritual life was getting stronger. I felt more satisfied with her than ever. And I go, baby, there's going to be a day I could be with you for the rest of my life. But right now we're laying a foundation and our marriage is going to be about service. And if it's going to be about serving God and serving others, why don't we just start right now come on you guys got that so now serving God keeps you on fire we should never stop serving right reason number three you are needed this is the reason you should this is why we need you why serving so far we need you no one can do what you were created to do you are here in this church for a reason there is a work that God has created for you to do in this church and world that you can, and world, so uh, that only you can do. And I want you to get this. There's a work. That's why God brought you here. God did not bring you here just to enjoy the preaching and enjoy the ministry. He just didn't bring you here just to grow. He brought you here to grow spiritually so you could do your ministry. You're a minister. You're one, of, you're one of the thousands of ministers we have here. Take your call serious. There's people that only you can reach. And until you take your call seriously and say, I'm going to start serving in the local church, this is what's going to happen. There's people that won't be reached. And I understand there's going to be ministry that God's trying to do, that Jesus is trying to do, that he can't get, he can't do only because you're not saying yes to ministry. I remember, I remember there was a guy that I met behind the trash bin. And as I, I met him behind the trash bin, um, I, was, I was witnessing, sharing my faith, inviting people to our service. And, and it was the Saturday before our first service. It's our first service, our first church service. And he 
was living behind a trash bin. And I found him there, and I asked him why, we asked him, why, are, you living, why, why are you living behind that trash bin? He goes, he goes, it's a safe place. There's only one way in, one way out. And he goes, um, this is the safest place. I'm new to the city. Um, I, I don't know what's going on. I came here chasing after my wife that's in prison. And, and, I, and I, thought, I thought she was in, uh, I, they said San Diego, and I got my sands messed up, and I ended up with San Bernardino. And I said, well, how can I help you? You know, we're, we're, we're starting a church. It's opening tomorrow. How can I help you? He goes, I'm hungry. I, got, I go, I got a solution for you. Tomorrow, we're going to get you food now, but we got tomorrow, we got Stater Brothers chicken, and I got some ladies cooking some rice and beans and tortillas. Right? I go, so just come to church, and we'll give you some chicken. Do you know that's serving? Right? So he, do you know what happened? He came. And he came with all the other homeless people. And they, were coming, they weren't coming to hear the preaching because they never heard me preach. They didn't even know who the pastor was. They came for chicken. There's some people that you're not going to reach until you feed them. Stop preaching when someone's hungry. Feed them and then you can talk to them a little bit. Meet, find their need. Meet their need. And then they'll listen to you. See, I, I think we make this all too spiritual sometimes. Someone's hungry. Feed them. What they need is Jesus, the bread of life. No, they need some wonder bread. Go down there and need some miracle whip. Go over there. But this is the idea. Is, so we fed them and, and he came. But you know what happened? Something supernatural happened with the little, it looked like a natural gift. We're just gonna doing Stater Brothers chicken with some, with some rice, beans, and tortillas. Yes. But by the time he was done, he gave his life to Jesus. At eight years old, he's been a drug addict since eight years old. His mom was the one that introduced him to drugs and drug and, 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 and he was selling drugs and drug dealing. He was upset. He was in and out of jail, violent man. But one moment, some little chicken, rice and beans and tortillas got him into the house of God. He gave his life to Jesus and Jesus did not save him to sit. Jesus saved him to serve. So now, you know what I did with him? Because I want to keep him on fire. I gave him an assignment to serve. I go, your job, you're going to be the greeter, a greeter. So when people come in, all you got to do is just, hi, welcome to the way. That's it. Smile and give them, give them a bulletin. It's right there. He goes, oh, you think I could do that? Yeah, you can. You got a good smile. Go ahead. So this is what happened. I, I show up, and he's like mad dog. If you know what I, mean. <laughs> like, I go, oh, hey, hey, hey. So I stopped him, and I go, bro, you're scaring off all the customers. <laughs> he goes, I go, you got to smile, smile like this. He has a smile for a long time in his life. I mean, he's used to mad dog, and he's used to gang banging. He's used to drug dealing. He's used to fighting on the streets. So he had a natural face like, Right. I mean, I mean, he had tattoos all over him, F this and all kinds of stuff. And he was our greeter. <laughs> so, so, at least smile with the F word on. Come on. So, 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 he started smiling. He got so good. He got so good at greeting. He ended up years later becoming our head greeter. People didn't realize that we rescued him behind a trash bin and we started sending him out to other churches to train other churches. People were asking us, how do you greet people? I'll send, I'll send Lynn over there. He'll train you. And they didn't realize that we rescued a treasure behind a trash bin. We put him to serve. And he, as he continued to serve, he continued to grow. He continued to stay on fire. He's not the same man that he used to be today. Come on, he's a foreman, an electrician. He has a team that he's leading. He's making over $150,000 a year and we found him behind a trash bin. I'm telling you, if you serve God and put him first, he'll add, he'll add everything to you. Come on. You just need to ask yourself, am I serving God? Because if you are, everything else will fall into place. You're needed though. 
1 Corinthians 12, 21 says, the eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. That's, that's be dumb. Like imagine me saying to my feet, you know, you know what feet? We don't need you, homie. We could do without you. And imagine my feet, listen. <laughs> I wouldn't be up here right now if my feet betray me. I'm done. Right? The idea is don't let the devil tell you you're not needed. Stop telling yourself you're not needed. Stop telling yourself that you don't, you don't fit in or you don't have enough education or you don't know enough about God. Stop lying. Stop letting the devil lie to you. You are needed. Come on, serve God. God has recreated you for a great purpose. You've been called to do great things. There's people that you're going to reach and you're going to serve, and they're waiting for you to say yes so they can say yes to Jesus. Amen? So you're needed. Now, I, I'm going to give you an example. In, in children's ministry, in our, in our just a nursery, we change 15,600 diapers. While you're sitting here, they're dealing with caca and pee pee. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that, but. <laughs> so you could be here laughing like you're laughing right now. <laughs> but, but understand this, if, we, if, if God even send us another 100 babies, that might be another, another near thousand diapers. We need, come on, someone might right here might say, I'm good at changing diapers. I change my, di my baby's diapers. I change my grandbaby's diapers. Well, we need you over there. Maybe no one else wants to do that, but you can do that. And come on, and you're going to bless a little boy, a little girl, and you're going to bless a family so they can be in the house of God and get their breakthrough. Amen? We have over, I want you to know, we, we served over 24,000 hot meals at our downtown campus. You can volunteer down there, and the homeless come. They haven't eaten all day long, and we have a chef's kitchen, and we cook them a meal. Sometimes we get Olive Garden, just reheat it up for them. Because, but the idea is we're feeding people, we're cooking meals. We even have people that volunteer chefs over there. You might be saying, I love cooking. You might even want to do a restaurant. Why don't you practice on the homeless? Do a taste test with them and if they don't like it don't open the business they like almost everything <laughs> right whatever your gift is are you like to cook you like to bake you like whatever it is you could serve you could clean after service we got Jimmy he's here he comes here at three o'clock in the morning and he lines up all the chairs and he's been doing this for right around 10 years you know Jimmy came in here out of prison and he always sits on that second row with his beautiful family there. But he didn't have a family when he came to this church. But he was always serving here, and I'd be praying with him. He goes, man, am I ever going to get a wife? I go, you're going to get a wife, and she's going to love you for who you are. She won't care what your past is, and God's going to bless you. And one day he came up to me while he was still doing the chairs at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. I get here right around 3 o'clock in the morning with him. He, he's out there before I get here, and we come in. He goes, there's somebody I want to introduce you to. I got a girlfriend. Jimmy, I go, what? God is good. God not only gave him a girlfriend, he has a wife now. He has, well, four kids now. He has a brand new baby. Come on. He's no longer living in his car. He just moved into his new house. He has a business right now. And God, is, and it just started because he was willing to be faithful, lining up chairs. Well, give God some praise. It's for reals. These are real stories. You're needed. We have over 400,000 people that visit this church every single year. They need a touch. Sometimes they need a hug. They need counseling. They need discipling. They need friendship. They need a handshake. They need a smile. They need some help with their family. This is why we give. This is why we have a men's home and women's home. We help people get off the streets all the time. There's no excuse. If a, someone's homeless, we can help them get off the street right now. Why? Because we're investing in people. We're finding needs and we're meeting them. 
And we're going to continue doing that till the day we die. We're going all the way to Africa. And we're finding little boys and little girls that have been left abandoned on the streets. And we let them know we got a home for you. And we rescue little boys. We're rescuing prostitutes off the street. And we got a home for just prostitutes in, in Kenya. And we're bringing them off the streets. Say, baby, you no longer have to sell your body. There's a church that loves you. There's a God that loves you. We are here to serve you all the way from California. Come on, God is good. There's missionaries here. In this audience, it's time for you to sign up. And reason number three, four, is God blesses those who serve. Say with me, God blesses those who serve. The first blessing is spiritual and emotional health. Healthy believers serve because they serve, and because they serve, they remain healthy. We are spiritually healthy when we are serving and we're not spiritually healthy when we're not serving. Jesus said this in John 4, 34. It says, Jesus explained, my nourishment comes from doing the will of God. He literally said that he gets nourishment or food or sustenance. It makes, he said, it, that word nourishment means, means healthy and strong. It makes me healthy and strong. It makes me satisfied and fulfilled. And I get that nourishment from doing the will of God who sent me. And from finishing his work. Maybe you've never thought that you got a work to do. And there's nothing that will satisfy you more than doing what you've been called to do. Nothing else. No girl. Man, if Pancho just came back in my life. Pancho, you make me whole. I've never been the same since you left me. Pancho. If it's not Pancho, it's Roscoe. You're Roscoe. <laughs> Come back home. <laughs> I need you, baby. <laughs> but the truth is, Roscoe can't make you whole. Trisha can't make you whole. Come on. Paco and Taco can't make you whole. There's only one that can make you whole. There's only one that can fulfill you. The weed can't fulfill you. The drugs can't fulfill you. Come on, stop going to the green cross and get in that Mary Jane and start going to, come on, to that bloody cross that Jesus has saved you, that Jesus has gave his life for you, and he'll take you higher than you could ever imagine. He's a God that knows how to satisfy you. He knows how to fulfill you. He knows how to make you whole. Have you ever heard the joy of the Lord is my strength. God wants to make you whole, but there has to be a time that you say, yes, Jesus, I'll serve you. Yes, Jesus, I'll do what you ask me to do. And if you do that, you'll find all your nourishment. I remember um, as the church began to grow, I was at the top of my sales career in the car business, and I just finished building my house it was a, you know, beautiful house on the, on the foothills in Yucaipa. I probably spent three, 400000 on upgrades in the house. Um, I'm on the top of my career. I'm in the, in the number one GMC store in the country, doing really good. And then God called me to leave it all and serve the community in San Bernardino. Now, I want you to understand, the church had no money. So I, wasn't, I was going from everything to nothing, it looked like. So what I did, I sold everything to serve this church, serve the people in San Bernardino, sold my house, moved into the neighborhood, brought my girls out of the Ukaikaba School District and put them in the San Bernardino School District because I thought this, how can I serve them if I'm not willing to be one of them? And I did. I gave it all up and we moved into, we moved into San Bernardino and we be living in San Bernardino and I'm not leaving San Bernardino till Jesus Christ comes back because I have an assignment here and I'm here to serve. But I remember that week, that week that I left my job and that week I, we were doing an outreach in, in a real tough neighborhood. It was on 10th Street and the nickname for 10th Street was murder on 10th Street because there's so many murders on that street. That, that week I did a funeral for one of the guys that got in a shootout with the police. They shot him 21 times. And nobody wanted to do the funeral. No pastor wanted to do it because the fear of gang violence that might happen at that funeral because all the shot callers and people from different guys, they knew where they were going to meet. And there was a lot of talk about retaliation all over the place. And nobody wanted to do the funeral. I go, I'll do it. And I remember when all the gang members and all the gang leaders came in, I got real bold. And I told them, guys, somebody has to end this. 
I mean, we got, we got the little homies in the hood. They're looking up to you guys, and this is where they end up dead. Someone has to finally say, I'm done. I'd be an example to these guys. This is what we're going to do. We're going to help you get off the, come on. We're going to help you transition. We got jobs. We're going to, we're going to, we'll, we'll do whatever we can. I go, next week, I'm going to be knocking on your doors and let's talk. And because some of you guys are business people. We're going to help you get reestablished. We're going to help you. It's, come on. We're going to help you live for God. We're going to help you be an example. We're going to be supporting you. From now on, you don't need to do this on their own. And I remember saying that and I got so excited. I just tapped on that casket. Bam! And they're like, I'm like, yeah, that's right. We got served. <laughs> no time to back up there. But when we came back to the hood, they go, man, you really came, huh? And I remember we did an outreach in that hood, and we cleaned up the whole neighborhood. And we had trash bags all around. I was sitting down, and after the cleanup, we had trash bags like a mountain all around me. They just left my job, sitting down in the hoodest of hoods. And my, me and my brother right there, and everybody left, and all we had the trash, all we, all we had was the trash and us. I was in a pile of trash waiting for a truck to come so we could load it and take the trash to the dump. And I told my brother, I go, bro, look around. He goes, what? Look at this. How you feeling? He goes, I'm feeling good. I go, me too. I've never felt any better than this. I'm fulfilled right now. Who would have ever thought that I'd be living, sitting on a graffiti street with trash all around me, feeling the best in my life? Because I want you to understand this. When you begin to serve God, God's going to bless you with his joy. God's going to bless you with his peace. And I'm telling you this, your best days aren't behind you. Your best days are ahead of you. God has said, you haven't seen nothing yet. And of course... We just started the ministry, but look where we're at now. We got churches all over, come on, all over the area. We got churches all over the world. Come on, we're reaching thousands upon thousands of people every single week. And it all started with serving the hurting and broken. And I want to leave you with this. When you begin to not serve God, God will also bless you with answered prayer. In Psalms 37, 4 says, enjoy serving the Lord. And he will give you whatever you ask for. There's some of your prayers he won't answer until, see, until you say yes to serving him. See, God is saying, answer my prayer. I've, I've made a prayer over you every day of your life because I had a purpose over your life. And when you say yes to my prayer, that you would say yes to serving me and using your gift to serve others and saying yes to get planted in the church and start serving in your local church, I will give you whatever you ask for. I want to end with this last one. When we serve, this is a blessing, our family will serve God. One of the fruits of faithful, faithfully serving God is our family will also serve God. We cannot expect for our children to be sold out servants of Jesus when we are not serving Him and have not prioritized the things of, and have prioritized the things of the world and use them as an excuse to not serve God. You got to be super careful that you are not training Dodger fans and Raider fans before you create servants of God. I, I don't want, I'm a Dodger fan, but I, but I understand this. My girls probably like the Dodgers. I like the Dodgers because I pass on my interests and values to them, right? And they, they, would, they shouldn't, they, not angels, the Dodgers. We know that. Okay. And you might be a Raider fan. Any Raider fans in here? All right. Raider. Okay. It's getting, it's getting dangerous already. You seen the hood came out right there, bam, like, Raiders, he can what's up? No, we're keeping the spirit. Now, but the idea is, how crazy that your kids could identify with your sport, the team you're associated with that you love, and they don't associate your life with serving God. Let's make sure, whoever you like, let's end it with this. Joshua 24, 15 says, maybe you don't know, don't want to serve the Lord. You must choose for yourselves today. Maybe, I don't know. Today you must decide who you will serve. You will, will you serve the gods of their ancestors and worship? Ancestors worshipped when they lived on the other side of the Euphrates River? Or will you serve the gods of the Amorites who lived in the land? 
you must choose for yourselves. But as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. As for me, I don't know about you, but as for me and my whole family, we're going to serve the Lord. I'm making that decision right now. My kids are going to serve the Lord. My grandchildren are going to serve the Lord. Everybody in my family, by the time it's all said and done, we are not serving the old gods that were passed on to us. We're not serving the alcoholism. We're not serving the gang banging. We're not serving the jealousy. We're not serving the adultery. We're not serving the lies. We're not serving the hustle. We are serving the King of kings and Lord of lords. As for me and my house, my kids will serve God. Now, they'll serve God, and they'll serve, I want you guys, they'll serve who you serve, and they'll serve what you serve. So if you're not serving God, don't expect your children to serve God. But if you're serving God, and I'll tell you, the reason I'm serving God is because my mama served God. Every Sunday, she'd take me to church, and I'll tell you why would she took me to church every Sunday, because she was serving in the church. She always had an assignment. She was always involved in some ministry. And she always taught me, Marco, don't just go to church. Be the church. Get involved with the church. Get planted with the church. And when they ask you to do something, do it. So today, we get an opportunity and we're going to make two decisions. One is, you're going to decide whether you're going to serve the Lord. The second thing is, I just want you to do is sign up for something today. Where do you start? Even if you could give an hour in a month, serve. But don't expect to start serving just like don't expect to go to college if you haven't even gone to the college to sign up. Sign up. We got a hundred ministries out there that need help. Every ministry needs help. And when you join, we can help more people. And we can touch more people. We can love more people. We need your help. There's somebody that needs your touch. One of the ministries that needs help is our, is our special needs ministry. Our special ministry needs ministry is short on volunteers. That means that right now, those little boys and little girls go in there, they're, they take work, but there's somebody that is willing to love these babies and love these kids so parents could come into this church and enjoy themselves and not be worried. I know my kids probably acting up over there, but it don't matter. We love your kid. We want your child over there, and we want him to know Jesus and want you to relax and rest here. Because I know all week long you're working hard. Wouldn't it be great that you could give relief to a family? I could mention all kinds of ministries, but just say yes to serving the Lord. How many are ready to start saying yes to serving the Lord and say yes to your blessing, say yes to your promotions, say yes to your breakthroughs? Let's all stand up. You guys are awesome. I'm going to dismiss you just a second. But before we do, I just want to just remind you also where um, we are, the, the growth conference is two sections of it. We're going to have our night services, which is going to be right around... 10% of everything we're doing, but the, the majority of the ministry is going to happen in the morning. Um, we're going to do, how, we're going to show people how to do deliverances. We're going to actually, there's going to be times of prayer, laying on hands. It's going to be revival in the morning. We're going to, we're going to have all kinds of workshops. By the time you're done, you're going to be equipped on how to reach your world. And some of you guys are going to get an impartation of global ministry. There's something big in you, but it has to be unlocked. And one of the ways that you unlock your life is hang around people that are doing great things. God's ready to do great things in you, but you'll never get an, you'll never get an a impartation of an anointing or, or that you've not honored. I'm telling you, show up. God's taking our church somewhere. Just sign up. It's the price of a happy meal, basically. Two happy meals. But show up. But I'm, don't put it off. Get your ticket. The VIP tickets allow you to go into a podcast that we're going to do live. We're going to do live. We're going to do like four podcasts. You're going to be able to go to one of them. It's going to be live. Like Vlad's going to be actually in that podcast. He's going to be interviewing me. And these guys have millions of followers. It's going to be amazing. We're going to have a live audience. And, and we only have a, only 400 VIP tickets. You want to get back there because you're going to get one-on-one um, -on -one stuff and personal stuff there. And also when you get the VIP you get early entrance into our night services. So you're going to have early, you know, on, on those nights, 
there's going to be a line around the building, overflow everywhere. So get your, get your ticket and get ready for that. I want everybody that can to be there. But before we leave, I want to give an opportunity for every single person to come to know Jesus and make a decision like Josh, Joshua did. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And you make that decision. And it's going to be a legacy you're going to pass on to your kids and pass on to the next generation. And as you make a decision to serve the Lord, you're saying yes to joy. You're saying yes to promotion. You're saying yes to your destiny. How do you come to Jesus? You come exactly the way you are. You come with your pain. You come with your failures. You come with your addictions. We all come the same way. God's the one that's going to save you. God's the one that's going to forgive you. God's the one that's going to set you free. God's the one that's going to fill you with His Spirit. And no matter what you've done, you could be forgiven. It's very important that you receive forgiveness and forgive yourself. And no matter how bad things are, God can restore your life. He's a restorer. He's the one that can make you whole. He's the one that can set you free. But there has to be a, a decision that you make finally in your life. I'm going to serve God. And when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, He'll forgive you of every one of your sins. His Spirit will come live in you. You'll become a brand new person. And He's going to remake you for purpose. You're going to be surprised where God's going to take you. you. Say, man, you have these big plans for me? I do. If you just say yes. God has plans for good and not evil for you, hope in the future. You're one yes away from your whole life and eternal life being transformed. Don't think, man, I got to do it. You don't have to do it. You have to say yes. God's going to do it. God's going to set you free. You just have to say, yeah, he's the miracle worker. You understand that? He wants to do the work. He wants to start a work and finish it in you. There's another group that you're believers, but you backslid. You've lost your fire. It's time for you to come back home. Come on, it's time to get your joy back. It's time to get your peace back. It's time to get your ministry back. Come back home. Recommit your life to the Jesus. Finally make up your mind. Finally, I'm all in. It starts today. Things are changing. And you can let your family know things are changing. That Sunday, I heard a crazy Puerto Rican preacher and I gave my life to Jesus. Come on, this is your day. When I count to three, say, man, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to recommit my life to Jesus. I want to know before I leave this place that I'd go to heaven if I were to die. Because understand this, only those that call upon the name of Jesus will have eternal life. What are the profit to gain the whole world and lose your soul? What a shame that you're focusing on your career, you're focusing on everything, but you miss the most important thing, it's your soul. And if your soul isn't complete, your life will never be complete. Your relationships will never be complete. There's always going to be something missing. And that's something that's missing. You're going to keep on searching. Don't waste your whole life away and at the end die and be lost forever. And understand, there is a heaven, but I, but I got to give you the truth. There also is a hell. Imagine being in hell for eternity only because you rejected an offer of forgiveness, new beginning, and new life. This is your day. When I count three, I want you to raise your hands. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to be saved or I need to recommit my life to Jesus. One, when I say three, raise your hands. This is an action step. This is how you begin to serve God. The Holy Spirit, God's Spirit speaking to you today. Give your life to Him. The Holy Spirit saying, come on, come on, follow me. I got an abundant life for you. Come follow me. I'll set you free. Come follow me. I'll restore your life. Come follow me. I'll give you eternal life. And when you raise your hand, this is your first act of service. Yes, Lord, you got me. And you come to where you are. One, two, and when I say three, quickly raise your hands all this building. Three, raise your hands all over this building. I'm surrendering all. Proud of you, young man. Proud of you. Proud of you. Proud of you. Way over there. Proud, proud of you guys. Proud of you guys. Proud of everyone right there. Right there. Right there. Come on. Right there. Right there. Right there. Proud of you. Love you guys, man. All right. All over there. All in the back. Okay. This is what I'm going to ask you to do. If you raise your hand, I want you to take one more bold step. I'm not going to have you do no speeches or nothing. But I know this. If you have faith and you're saying, man, I want, to, I want to change my life. You'll never change your life without new action. This is what I want you to do. I want you to leave your seat and I want you to come up here. I'm just going to pray with you. That's all. But this is a sign. I'm leaving my old life in those seats. 
I'm come on, I'm leaving, I'm leaving my old pain in my those seats. I'm leaving my come on, I'm leaving the 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 loss in those seats, the failure in those seats, and I'm gonna serve God. You raise your hand, just come forward. Just come forward. If you raise your hand, just one more step. We're just gonna pray with you. That's it. This is a sign that you're serious. I'm serious. I want change. Come on, let's give them a hand as they're coming up. Come on, let's give them a hand as they're coming up. There's someone's daughter, there's someone's son, there's someone's mama, someone's daddy. Come on, if you raise your hand, come up here real quick. We're going to pray with you. We're going to pray with you. Donald, nice to meet you, Donald. Proud of you. God bless. What's your name? Brian, nice to meet you, Brian. Logan, God bless, guys. We love you, man. We're so glad you're here. Come on, Brian and Logan. What's baby? Giselle? Giselle? Giselle. God bless you, Giselle. Come on, church. Come on. Ask your neighbor. You want to go out there? I'll go out there with you. There's somebody out there still needs to be up here. This is your new day. Nice to meet you, Billy. God bless you. And your name? Ashley. Billy and Ashley. Nice to meet you. So glad you're here. God bless. What's your name? Kevin. Nice to meet you, Kevin. Every one of you matters so much to God. We love you. God bless you. Awesome. Awesome. We're going to pray right now. And I'll tell you this, I know you're serious. Because if you weren't serious, you wouldn't come up here. As a matter of fact, I know how serious you are. Do you know what's crazy? You've heard from God today. Some of you guys wonder, does God hear me? Does he speak to me? I know you've heard from God, and I'll tell you why. If someone told you at the beginning of the service, you know you're going to be up there. You go, I ain't going up there. But God spoke to you. And I'm so proud of you that you're taking the step. It might seem like I just walked 20 feet. Were you going to change my life? Yes, because your heart is being changed. And it was the, probably the longest 20 feet of your life, but you did it. There was a war within you and said, no, oh, no, no, not right now, but you did it. And that's how you're going to follow Jesus for the rest of your life. He has nothing but good for you, okay? And I want to say this. If anybody, if, if you've ever been to church and they hurt you, I'm going to say I apologize for them. Maybe people misrepresented the Lord and they judge you and they hurt you. Just because they did that doesn't mean there's not a real, come on, a real thing out there. I'm not saying we're perfect, but I'm going to tell you this. We're going to love you. Okay? We're going to love you. And, 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 I, I, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter your failures or stuff. God loves you. And he's never going to leave you. He's never going to turn his back on you. You know what happens if you fall down? Get back up. You're still a child of God. Get back up. Don't stay down. Right? Get back up. And you keep getting back up. You let the devil know, I'm never going to stay down. I'm never going to stay down. I'm going to serve God. I'm going to get back up. Get back up and get back up and get back up until I'm learning how to walk. And then I'm now, I'm skipping now. Boom, boom, boom. Watch me. And there'll be a time that you're so strong, all you're doing is helping people get up. Amen. We got classes for you. We're going to help you. We're going to be there with you. I ain't going nowhere. And what you mean by that is, I'm going to be here until Jesus takes me home. So if there's going to be anything consistent in your life, it's going to be your church. Okay? We love you. Welcome to the family. Let's pray together, okay? Let's pray. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I thank you for loving me so much that you brought me here to hear this message that you want me to serve you. I know I'm a sinner and I deserve to be punished for my sins. But I believe that you love me so much that you came to earth, you suffered, you died for my sins, and you rose from the dead so that I can be forgiven. All my sins have been paid for. There is no punishment. There is no judgment in my future because I put my faith in you, Jesus. Jesus, forgive me. Set me free and make me a new person. I open my heart now. Jesus, come in and fill me now with your love, with your Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord, 
I am now forgiven, saved, a child of God. I am a new person. And I will serve you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for freedom, new beginnings. If you need prayer, stay right here. We want to make sure we pray with everybody. Get your information. Your next step is Holy Warriors and baptism. You need anything, we're here for you. We love you. Remember this church, if God is for you, there's no one can come against you. Sign up for a ministry. 